Danny Vane, number five, hand plank. I'm gonna grind the frog. Well, why brush it actually? Yeah. Well, actually, in fact, I already have. And I've already reassembled Johnny Five. No, I've already made this video. Mm -hmm. I recorded it literally 10 minutes ago. It was an hour and 20 minutes long, which is probably too long anyway. But unfortunately, partway through the audio, it disappeared. No, should I upload that video anyway? Or not? I don't know. But there's no audio. After about 10 minutes. I probably will. Anyway. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a disassemble. <laughs> and I'm going to backtrack, yes, reverse ferret, what I've been doing to get to this stage. And it's looking quite pretty, that it is. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how I cleaned up the uh, the body of this hand plane, this bench plane. And uh, I painted it all up and what have you. And uh, then got to the stage where we had to do the actual frog. Clean up the frog, make it all work properly, make it nice. And for which I have done so. Now, this is a Stanley, not a record. I know I've painted it blue, but there you go. That's what paint I had. So that's what I'm using. And I'm, I'm not that worried. Now, somebody did comment say, well, you should keep it original. Well, I suppose you could, really. I've got my original one here, you see. Yeah. But this one's a wartime effort. That it is. And how you know that is from this uh, adjuster screw here. You see how free that is now? Now, now I've cleaned it up and sorted it all out. It's absolutely lovely now. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble it. And I'll explain what I did, to, what I did to actually get to this stage. All right. First of all, we need to remove the frog. So we're going to remove, remove the frog. That we are. It's called the frog because it kind of looks like it's frog. It's got a frog face. Let's see. All right. So we'll remove the frog, and I'll show you, or explain to you what I've been doing to this uh, frog to get the frog to this stage. Yeah. So I'm kind of like backtracking. I just did it. Just, I just literally put it all together. Oh dear, these things are sent to try us, aren't they? Alright, now, it is a really nice thing, though. it really is. Now, good idea is to have a magnetic dish, which is already full of stuff, so I'm not going to. Now, I should have to remove the actual frog itself, though. And the adjuster screw here for the frog, I've cleaned it all up. It's all oiled, and it's all nice, ready to go. Now, clean it up using this wire wheel here. Now... Well worth using. If you haven't got one of them, just use a wire brush. Exactly what I did with this. I cleaned this all up with a wire brush, but also with this uh, wire wheel here as well. But if you haven't got one of these, just use a wire brush and a bit of sandpaper and what have you and clean it all up. And you can screw it down to something if you like. If you screw it to you've got a holder. Just a couple holes there, isn't there? Just screw it to a piece of wood. And then you, you, you use both hands to get a bit of a weddy behind it. Just mind you don't bend your adjuster here. Now this particular one here has a rather nice adjuster. It is really, really positive and it's not floppy or anything like that you get these chinese planes but they're all over the flipping place and then you've got this screw here which also need need to be removed okay and that screw is what holds the plane and chip breaker assembly into place but also the um lever cap which has to be there you see the state everything was in you know i've started cleaning it up but it's yeah it needs a lot more work um <clears throat> and then what you've got to do is then you've got to remove these other components. So you can't get to that screw there until you remove this knob. The adjuster knob. That has a reverse thread. So if you go anti-clockwise, you're actually screwing it down. Whereas if you go clockwise, you're actually trying to remove it. But you can't remove it until you remove the actual... Um, <clears throat> of this stirrup here. There's a little stirrup here that goes into these two grooves. Now, I've removed this once already today i might better get it out again but i've actually put a bit of super glue in it which i will do again but i'll give it a go now i use a little uh, nail punch like so and i should be able to punch that pin out there's like a little pin just there can you see that and you have to click you know uh, remove that pin and hopefully it comes out it's a bit tighter because i was actually super gluing it yeah, that's coming out all right and then what I use then, what I, use, I tend to use a pair of side cutters, I should be able to grip the other end, like so, and then pull that out. All right, put that somewhere safe. I'm going to drop it in there so don't lose it. All right, now that yoke there's all floppy. It won't come out just yet until I t uh, go clockwise with that screw. See how free it is now? Because I have already pulled this apart and cleaned it all up. And cleaned all the threads up. And it works beautifully now, it really does. So you unscrew there like so, and you can remove it. So there's the stirrup, okay? I've cleaned it up on the actual wire wheel. I haven't painted it or anything like that. I didn't think I really need painting. It's cast, it is. It's a piece of cast iron. 
And if you can see here, the thread here is in reverse, and I'll just drop my, my knob. Don't drop your knob, but I'll tell you what you must do to your knob. You must lube your tool. That you must. Okay, I have a tool that has already been lubed and already been cleaned up. Now, at first, I thought this was just plastic, that knob. This is a wartime effort, and during the war, there were shortages of stuff like irons and various other materials, and brass, or whatever. Traditionally, they adjust a knob like this one here. You know, that little wheel there is brass, okay? Some of the later ones were plastic, like the Stanley Handyman hand play. Pretty much the same castings, but the fittings are a bit shoddy. Um, but this one isn't plastic. It's Bakelite. Can you remember the old Bakelite radios, old wireless radios and stuff like that? You must have seen them in the old second-hand shops somewhere and uh, on TV. <laughs> but they're, they're Bakelite. Now, this is Bakelite. In fact, some of the early, early TV cases were Bakelite. Now... That's Bakelite. Now, I can tell the Bakelite because it's hard. It's really hard. It's not like plastic. Plastic has a dead sound to it. You hear it ringing in your head. It's really quite hard. It's Bakelite. And it's been uh, fixed in around this... I don't know if it's been baked onto it or whatever. I don't know. Um, but you've got this brass fitting here. which is the screw arrangement. It's actually got a thread inside there. In reverse. So to do it up is anti-clockwise. And that's so basically when you do it. Uh, clockwise, and then pushes the blade down, you know, for more depth of cut. But I've cleaned it all up. I've also cleaned this screw up here because what happens is over a period of time they fill up with grease, obviously grease and what have you. But then what happens sticks to the grease, sawdust, and it just creates a lot of resistance. Now, well, it just it's free as a bird. It is. It really is. It's beautiful. As you can see, you just you know, you can part way on there. It spins really nicely. Feels nice as well. Yeah, really good quality. See, things used to be made properly, you see. These days, everything's made in China. I wouldn't mind if it was made in China if they actually did a good job. They can't even flip or grind a plain iron square like that one's a Chinese plain iron. And they can't even do that properly. It's crazy. Right, so we've got another screw here that would need to be removed. All right, and this is as far as I actually um, disassembled the frog because... There's certain elements I didn't want to remove, try and remove, and there's no point. One was this screw here, because it's quite hard to get out. And once I get, once I do that, it's going to, be, it's going to start causing me problems. I don't want to damage these threads, you see, so I left it. So all done. So I cleaned it up on the wire wheel and a, with a wire brush, like so. Clean all the crap out of it, have you? And then, you know, it's it's a good one. And the same here with this. Um, Screw adjuster because the, the rivet is literally riveted on and it's not really removable unless you grind one end of the rivet off and replace the rivet. I don't want to do that. No. So I decided against it. So all I've done was clean it up on the wire wheel. <laughs> works you know you get some, you've seen the modern planes there's a lot of them, new stanley's like the stanley sweetheart range and what have you and stanley baileys they're not stanley baileys no they're just cheap chinese crap the modern stanley's not worth having well that's, that, no, that's, no that's not fair actually they are worth having but you will need to do a little bit of tlc to them you know but there are cheaper options that are just as good like the footprint and stuff like that, you know. Um, I'm comparing to the modern standies. I'm not talking, not talking about these old ones. These old ones are fantastic tools, properly made stuff. So, <clears throat> so I cleaned all that up. I have give it a coat of paint. I have it all the way around. So obviously, there's no. I, I degreased it, and then coated it in, in just some matte black uh, paint, and then a coat of lacquer on top of that. Um, let it go off, and it's yeah, it's, it's, it's nice now. Yeah, it's just, it's just clean. It just feels. I don't, just be, I don't know what it is. I, I, I know some people say, well, keep it original, what have you know, like this, like this one. I, don't, I just fancy it, making it pretty. <laughs> you know, I just want to do it. So I don't know. It's, well, it used to be my father's tool. Would you be proud? I don't know. I don't, know. Would you, well, that, yeah, I don't think he'd be that bothered, to be honest. He never used to look after his gear. He didn't. He's a hell of a craftsman. I mean, a hell of a craftsman. Boat builder. But, um, old school boat builder, I'm talking about. <clears throat> but he, 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 one thing he didn't have is style. <laughs> like a <North> eye. <laughs> oh, that's where I get it from. And the other thing he didn't have was... Um, uh, he, he, he valued the tools and what have you, but he never looked after anything. He really didn't. You know. 
Uh, yeah, everything I got off him was knackered when he passed away. So I'll place that screw back in there like so. And you could put a bit of thread lock on there if you like, but, you know, uh, I don't think it's really needed. That's quite nice, that's in there. You got, when, you, when you do this, right, <clears throat> you've got to make sure that that is perpendicular to the actual square, so it's not off at one angle. Otherwise, you'll effectively try and push the frog at an angle, which you don't want to happen. Now, there's another screw in here, which happens to be this one, which has a little groove in there. And that groove is where that actual little yoke there slots into. And that allows for the adjustment to and forth, to and forth of the frog. I'll show you how we do that. Like I say, I've already done this video, and I've done all the details, done all the paint, and cleaned everything up, and used the machine here, and showed you how I did it, and then the audio disappeared. Not very helpful today. I'm using my backup option. <laughs> Hope you hear me all right. But I usually have my wireless, uh, you know, uh, on, but it's, it's not, it wasn't the microphone's fault, it's the, um, the adapters we have to use on these. F I'm using a phone to record today, not not my camera. And uh, the problem with these flipping phones these days, they've got rid of the, uh, the headphone socket, haven't they? You know, the three and a half mil DIN socket, you know, jack plug on the side of your phones. And now all you've got is these silly old um, USB-C things, which means for me to plug this microphone in or any microphone in, I have to use an adapter, which means you you just you know has to process the sound and use a DAC, just audio converter to uh, convert the sound. Instead of it being you know, part of the phone, you've got these flipping adapters now. Arr, I can't get my screw in. Right, so <clears throat> what we're doing now? Just two around so you can see. There's these two screws here. I'm not going to tighten them up yet. What we've got to do is we've got to adjust the frog before we can, you know, uh, get it in the right place. So we're going to adjust the frog in a moment. So we'll place these screws into all that. Oh, if I can get it in the hole. I can't get my screw in. What can I get my screw in? Why aren't it going in? All right, you go in there. That's there, I think. Be really careful, you don't cross thread these things. Once I cross thread, they're buggered. So you've got to make sure. You've got, oh, that's it. If it doesn't go in free, there's a reason. If it doesn't, if it's not going freely. Ah, oh, it's going nicely now. Right, so screw it in there. Okay. And that one there. We're not going to tie it up yet because we want to adjust the frog to the mouth of the plane. No. I can see that in sitting square at the moment, for some reason. That's because of what I was saying earlier about this yoke on the back of there. I haven't got that perpendicular. So I'm going to loosen that screw and then reposition the frog, making sure it's square with the mouth of the plane. That's better. Yeah, because that can influence the positioning, you see, of the plane sideways as well. You can add skew, which you don't necessarily want to happen. Let's just tighten that up. That's good. So that yoke there, that little bit flat piece of steel can influence the angle of the frog. All right, so let's loosen them in, isn't it? Yeah. So we're just going to tighten them, just a little touch, just so it's sitting too, so it's not wobbling about, but it's not tight. And then we've got to adjust the frog to and forth to make sure that the frog is lining up with the mouth of the plane across here. So, where's my... Uh, I a rule here. Oh, there is. Got the rule. <clears throat> now, I know some people, well, why don't you call it a ruler? It's a ruler, they said to me. So, no, it's a rule. A rule, just so you know, starts from the end. The measurement starts from the end of the of the rule. If it's a ruler, it would start three millimetres in. Like, you know, a school ruler or something like that. But a rule, like this one, starts from the end. Just so you know. <laughs> I had this argument so many times, but here you go. Now, what we've got to do is, you see, we've got to align this frog with the mouth of the plane, yeah? So you don't want it being too far forwards, covering up the mouth of the plane, obviously, or restricting its exit, but you don't want too far back, because what happens is, if it's too far back, when your plane iron is sitting on the frog, say for instance, the plane iron, cross air like so, it won't be touching the frog all the way along, no. It'll actually have a gap underneath. You might not be able to see that, but there'll be a gap underneath because you're bridging it. 
And so what you need to do is have it so that frog lines up perfectly with the back of the actual mouth of the plane, that part there. So what you do is you grab your uh, steel rule, and if it's hitting that mouth, you know it's actually on both sides. Right? You line it up on both sides. Um, you know that it's in the wrong place. So what I've got to do is I've got to move it forwards, because at the moment it's too far back. So that means tightening up this screw in the back, the adjusting screw, the one with the little special slot in there. So I'm going to move it forwards. Visually, it looks okay. Maybe a little bit more. Uh, you know, sort of lining it up. So I effectively move the whole thing forwards, the whole mechanism forwards. They're using your steel rule. Or any rule with that. Use a bit of wood if you like. Anything. You know, anything that happens to be flat. And, and line it up. And if you feel that the, um, the mouth is causing an obstruction, the back of the mouth, that the frog is not like uh, lined up so there's no interference with the back of the actual um, mouth. Let's move up so you can see. Now I can feel on one side it's, li it's lining up okay on that side, but on this side it's still it's riding up just by a fraction of a millimetre. So I just want to either get away twisting that around a little bit or no, I'm going to move it forward a bit, just a touch. Get in the right place. It's probably about it now. You see, if you go too far forwards, you won't be able to, you know, exit the blade at the hole. Hence, you won't be able to make a shaving at all because <laughs> there'll be no blade. That's good. I think that's good. Yeah, I think there's no influence there. Yeah, that's good. All right. So <clears throat> that's just how you do that. Then once you've done that, you see, you can then tighten these two screws. Up on the top here. Keep in mind you don't move anything while you're doing it. Then double check with your rule. Make sure there's no influence and make sure there's no gap. You want so you want to perfectly in line if you can do it, yeah. All right. And at that stage, you've got you know. Uh, you, well, do you know what? You know when you make videos, okay, and uh, you're not gonna edit them. There's a good, bad, and the ugly, isn't there? And I've just done an ugly. I've done that arse boat face. I should have put that in. The adjuster. I wonder if anyone noticed. <laughs> so, shall we reassert the adjuster, the stirrup? Okay. Now, when you insert the stirrup, it's a bit awkward now because I've got to, you know, it'd be easy if I'd done that first. So, what we're going to do is we are going to insert our adjuster. What an idiot. <laughs> All right. What you've got to do is have that adjuster and it faces forwards. Okay. So, that's got to go that way. All right. Not backwards. Like that, it's got to go that way. You can see, all right. You poke it into that little hole, all right, like that. It's just poking through. And then you start to screw your uh, adjuster knob back on, all right. Anti clockwise, remember to, to screw up because it's got reverse thread, all right. And until, and once, once you get part way in, you can then get your stirrup and drop it into that slot just there. Can you see that? I think you can see that's there. And carry on screwing it down, all right? So it holds it into place then, you see? And at some point, you think to yourself, oh, okay, then we don't like that. I want to actually fix it into place. And you do that by reinserting your actual little pin, the little pin that you took out. I'm going to do that from there. And that'll slide through. Now, there is a, because it's all been cleaned up and, you know, there might have been some corrosion on it you removed, effectively what you've done is you've made it smaller. Slightly smaller diameter. Now, there's first things you could do is you could put that in that, you know, that little pin there. Just there. You can see it. A little tiny pin there. All right. All right. So you can tap that too, and you could actually get a uh, center punch on the opposite face once it's through and secure it into place. I'm, what I'm going to do here, though, I'm just going to tap it all the way through. Like so. Before I go any further, I'm actually going to use a little bit of super glue which there was some here a minute ago and I've mislaid it what have I done with that that's strange that was how did, how did I lose that oh where is <laughs> that used to be uh, from wood stick so, well it's from Eureka it's, uh, it's just this super glue and I'll just use like thread lock so I'll put a tiny amount in that hole there before I tap it to you can put it on the side if you want, on the side of the actual um, piece of metal if you want. And all that will do is it will just um, provide a little bit of uh, resistance. Effectively, you're filling any space between the actual 
uh, little uh, what, pen rivet we got in really rivet is because you're not you don't you're not um, pain in the back face but what you can do uh, you can actually get a center punch if you got one all right if you haven't got one just use super glue works I've done this loads of times it does work they don't I've never had one fall out and you can use center punch you can literally just put that onto something hard like a little anvil or maybe the top of a big bolt or something like that um, and then so it's that side's supported that's end of the pin is supported and then you can just tap a few times on this side and what you do is you'll splay out the, the the actual end of the pin and that lock itself into place you'll still be able to remove it if you need to in the future um, but yeah it works it stops you from losing it right so the the little stirrup is back in now the the adjuster knob is back into situ into into situ, into situ as well but look at that how free that is now and when i first uh uh yeah took this apart this was stiff but the screw, I cleaned up with a wire brush and what have you, and oiled and lubricated. Well, I got a lube your tool! Don't forget the lube your tool. I've got a t shirt with that one. And it's. <laughs> it, you clean out all the old crap and what have you, and then. Yeah, it just, it's just nice. It's not sloppy or you know, anything like that. It's just positive. It feels good. It's just nice, you know? It's quality. Old stuff. You know? Unless it's really badly worn, which this one is not. Even though it was my dad's tool, and he was a tool, <laughs> it it's just it's just does work. Okay, now this uh, plane here, I was, I'm I've pimped I'm pimping that up a bit. Okay, I'm making it a new. It's gonna have a new tote and a new knob into my des my design. What I do on my other hand planes, and also I've got a new plane iron, and this happens to be a Chinese plane iron. Now. My opinion on it, yeah, is is a bit divided. It's not. They lost the screw. I've got a screw loose. Oh, screws loose. Yeah, screws loose. Got the screw. Anyway, this is the new plane on I got from China. 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 <laughs> anyway, I've got a new plane plane on, and uh, I've got the old one here. As you can see, the new one is considerably longer than the old one. That is at the end of its life. And the, now you could say, well, you've got a bit more meat on there, and there is a little bit more meat on there, but you get chatter. Uh, the reason you get chatter is because there's, there's no, nothing there, you see. got to this, where the, yeah, that area there, and potentially it could feel a bit shitty. Is it, if you're doing your hardwoods, like, oh, and you've got a knot in it or something, and like you hit that, to, you won't, you're not going to do a great job. So oh, anyway, I've replaced it, I've got a new plane iron, but it's thicker. You see, this plane iron, the new one, is three millimetres thick. Three millimetres thick. Whereas the old one, Okay, is two millimeters thick. Now my number four, uh, number six, and number seven uh, Stanley Bentley hand planes. Actually, no, uh, my number six is a is a record, and my Stanley number my Bailey number seven. Both of them have Victor cast uh, hand forged plane irons, and they're great, and they're three millimeters thick as well. But the whole assembly had to be changed. I had to open the mouth up on this. You see, now if you look at uh, this particular hand plane. The uh, mouth on this is currently just over six millimetres from there to there. Okay? The width for that. The width for my slot, my slit, is six millimetres. All right? But on the originally, originally, it is only about five millimetres. It's literally a millimetre bigger. And now I had to make it bigger. Yeah, literally five millimetres. So, the reason for that is because obviously the, the actual plane iron that we're using and this hand plane happens to be the Chinese one and it wouldn't go through the hole. It wouldn't go through the, the mouth. So I had to um, make the mouth bigger, wider. It, it goes in now. Good, I say. Now, I'll just put this together just so you can see what I mean. It does work now, so... I also had to grind a bit more at the bottom here because the slot was too short. It just can't get it right. It's probably for you know designed for one of their cheap ass uh, hand planes, but it does fit. It needs a bit of, tails, a bit of extra work. Now, Papa, I wish they'd actually be able to grind square. So I have to regrind all this as well because it's not square. No, the end is definitely not square. <laughs> they can't get the basics right. Oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah, the people say, "Why do you expect this Chinese? It's Chinesey." <laughs> I expect to get the basics right. That's what I expect. You know, the, the telltale sign is going. The real telltale thing is going to be 
How good is the steel? Uh, they say it's high-speed steel. I've got my doubts. Um, no, but originally, I couldn't get this, even get on over the screw because the until I ground that out, but I can now. So it goes on there like so. Get nail. Like that. That's it. <clears throat> All right. As the plane on gets worn a bit, it'll be a bit easier because they'll, they'll be even further up then. So that fits in there nicely. That's good. And then I should be able to adjust that backwards and forwards. Far enough to get the plane on. That was the other thing. I couldn't get the plane on all the way out. It doesn't now. All the way in, sorry. Okay. Might have to do it even bit, a bit more, you know. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to. I will even. I will need to. Yeah, that bottom of the plane on that slot. I need to make it a little bit longer. I, I still haven't got enough adjustment on it. Well, hang on, that might be because that's not. It's, that's not sitting right yet, is it? Ah. Okay, that's sitting there. That's it. That's it. Uh huh. Okay, and then we've got the lever cap, which needs cleaning up. I'll we'll sort that out. That will be going on there like so. There's my compressor. It's got a leak somewhere. Like so. All right, I mean sideways, like as it's supposed to. So there you go. That's the frog assembly. Like I said, still what? 40 odd minutes, no, 26 minutes long video. So that's pretty much what I did to clean it up. I'll give it a few coats of paint, like I say, some black and some lacquer. Um, they're just acrylic paints. So you get all the enamel even better, I suppose. But then it'll take a lot longer to dry, uh, to dry. And we're in a bit of a damp environment at the moment because it's winter. Come to Christmas, it is. So there you go. That is the uh, frog reassembled. That it is. <laughs> look, look, it's not pretty, isn't it? Yeah. You can imagine all the nice new tote and a nice new knob. Well, yeah, go for watching another video for that one, wouldn't you? Anyway, if you want to support the channel, you can do it on Patreon or buy us coffee and the links are down below. But also, we are doing a rewilding here in France, which isn't necessarily supporting the channel, no, it's supporting our rewilding project. There's a GoFundMe link down below where you can actually buy a tree. And we'll part a tree on your behalf. Also, I'll make a sign to go with the tree, a bit like that Patreon sign down there. Um, and we will name, you know, put your name on it, or maybe a memory of a loved one, what have you. We're also planting trees in pairs, so like companion trees, but twist them so they grow together into a barley twist, so, you know, companion. And uh, also with arbors and stuff like that. And if you want to be part of that, you know, there's go family links down below. That there is. And the idea is, is that trees are good. And we need to plant more trees, not just for oxygen, so to speak, but also, you know, for the birds and the bees and what have you, and that, they all love the trees. And the bees, they love the willows early in the season when there's nothing else available for them because the willows, they flower quite early, you know, like they do. The little catkins and stuff, and the bees go crazy for them. So anyway, that is our plan. That's what we're doing. If you want to be part of that, there is a GoFundMe link down below. But please, 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 just boot the old like button and maybe subscribe to the channel and the little bell icon because then you get one of us feeling in your pocket if you don't upload another video. And also, I want to try and get to 25,000 subscribers and we've got 24,000, no, we've got 23,900 and something at the moment. I'll be pretty darn cool if I can get 25,000 subscribers by the 25th. <laughs> Anyways, don't be the ghost, so I can say toodaloo, you know, so toodaloo. And have a lovely day. And fix up my hand plane. They're great, you know. <laughs>